Hey, how are you? It's Monday. We didn't get to go to Miami. We're very pale. And I want to talk with you about Ernest Dudley Chase. Hi, first off, we wanted to say uh, to all the people in Miami, man, we never realized how great that event was and how much it meant to us until we don't have to go or get to go. But uh, to Hilda, to Jorge, to Mr. Weiser, to Mr. Schubin, thank you so much for always putting on such a great fair and we can't wait until next year. We'll make it through. Um, we had a lot of stuff that we were ready to take to Miami. And so now it's just kind of sitting around. So we wanted to share some stuff with you real quick, just a few minutes on Ernest Dudley Chase. Um, you might know him. You probably remember his name. He's the guy that does the real hyper precise decorative pictorial maps that were done early 20th century. Um, he's a great instance of someone that is a bigger success in the second half of life than he was in the first. In 1927, he decided towards the end of his career at 49, 49 years old in 1927, keep in mind life expectancy then for males was around 54. So he's deep into the second half of life. He decided he wanted to start making maps. But he didn't want to do anything that was just decorative and inferior. Not sure what he meant by that, but might have some ideas as to who he was referring to. So he sold his greeting card company that he made his initial wealth on and still stayed on with the company and began to make maps. With camera in hand, he would go out, go across the country, take pictures of key architectural things or points of cultural interest, and then he would do condensed little sketches that he would use throughout his maps. So I have a number of his things and many of them that are actually signed. Um, so here, 1935, the US, so depression era of looking across the country. 1935, this one signed down in the corner by him. And then a number of things that he did for local, for New England, his home turf, which is signed. Uh, probably one of the best things for Boston that was done in the 20th century, this map by him, his native area. But he also did things for what was changing in Europe. Uh, so we get a number of things that look at the rising empires prior to World War II or the nations as they were, and including some notable things of the malignant rising Nazi empire at the time. This uh, in joint publication with color text, uh, but also by him. This with the reversed swastika, which is signed by him. And then signed by him also is the uh, same base map, but with the right side lower, with the uh, German eagle. Other things for British Isles. A beautiful thing for Italy. With good detail down to San Giovanni Rotondo down south. Switzerland, signed by him. Two instances of France, one in black and white that's signed from 1935, one that I'm supposing were, might be 35 or a little bit later also signed in color, a Spain and Portugal. And then what was also notable is he came into working on things during the war years. So during World War II, he began to do maps thematically focused on those kind of hot points and areas of the key battles regions. So things here, Atlantic and Indian Ocean, that's signed by him. And then, really important, the Pacific battle map. One of the more famous that he's kind of known for now is his Total Victory, which is a two-sided map that looks at both the world itself and then a couple of regional theaters of battle. And then, towards, uh, towards after a war, he does a number of uh, thematic world maps. I do have one just pre his World of Wonders, issued on board, signed by him. World of Stamps was the last that we had out of this collection. So we'll have a list of those uh, wherever you're finding this video. Feel free to contact us. We will be standing by the phone or by email. Curtis at oldmapgallery.com. Thanks. We'll catch you soon.